For e-commerce tracking in GA4, Items Array plays an important role. For almost all of the events that you will be tracking, you will need to pass the information about the items or the products that users are viewing, adding to their shopping cart, etc. We looked at an example of the Items Array in the previous lesson. In this lesson, we'll take a closer look at the Items Array. Here is an example of Items Array. This Items Array contains only one item. Items Array is a JavaScript object. This object contains individual items within it. The array starts and ends with square brackets and all the items that are contained within it are enclosed in curly brackets. So here you only have one item. And this item has several properties or attributes and their values. Here is item ID and the value is 135. Item name, here's the value, item brand, etc. This is how this item looks when it's pushed to a data layer. If you're not familiar with how data layer push works, then check out the Google Tag Manager course where I go into the details of the data layers and how to push dynamic values into the data layer. Here is an example of an item array with two items in it. As you'll notice, the items are enclosed within curly brackets. So you have one item, a comma, and then the second item. These two items are enclosed within square brackets, which means they are part of an array. You can have up to 200 items in an items array. Each item has properties or attributes followed by the value. Each property or attribute has a colon followed by the value. Each property and value pair is separated from the other property and value pair by a comma. As you saw in the example items array, each item in this items array can have several parameters. Of those, only two, item ID and item name, are the required ones. In addition to these two parameters, Google Analytics also recommends certain other parameters to provide you richer information about the items that users are viewing, adding to their card, purchasing, etc. The parameters that are recommended by Google are listed on this screen. Let's take a quick look at these parameters. Item ID is a unique ID associated with that item. Item name is the name of the item. Affiliation parameter can be used to store the name of the partner or the vendor associated with that item. Coupon parameter can be used to store the coupon name or the code associated only with that item. If there is a coupon that's used for the overall transaction, then that needs to go at the transaction level rather than being a parameter associated with the item. If your store sells the products in different currencies, then you can associate a currency with individual product using the currency parameter. Discount is a discount associated with that particular item. Item brand parameter stores the brand of the item. Item category is the category that item belongs to. You can create a hierarchy of these categories by using five category parameters. So this is the top level category and then subcategory and subcategory, etc. Item variant allows you to store the variant or unique description of that item. This is generally used to store the color of the item or the size of the item. Location ID identifies the placement of that item on your site. This could be home page, category page, etc. Price is the price of that item. And the quantity parameter is used to store the quantity of the product or the item that the user is purchasing. In order for you to send this information over to Google Analytics, all you have to do is pass the items array. Google Analytics will automatically parse that information for you and provide the reporting for each individual item. It is recommended that you store these values in a data layer and then pull these values as required to pass them to Google Analytics 4. You can do that via Google Tag Manager or the G tag function. If you are using a third-party solution such as Shopify, they will automatically create a data layer for you. If you are using WordPress, then there are several plugins that can also create the data layers for you. If you are using custom code on your site, 
then you will need your developers to create the data layer. If you are interested in knowing how to create the data layer and push it to Google Tag Manager, then check out my Google Tag Manager course. I also cover the data layer fundamentals in the JavaScript course. Once you have the data, then all you have to do is pass those to appropriate events in GA4. One such event is the view item event that we looked at in the previous lesson. In the future lessons, we will look at the other events for e-commerce tracking. For now, go ahead and become familiar with the items array because this is a critical part of e-commerce tracking in GA4. And I will see you in the next video.